Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Michelle and Nicole. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here this wonderful Saturday afternoon. How are you? I'm doing well, and thank you for having me. Oh, you betcha. You, we're going to air your show in a little bit, uh, probably in at the end of October or so. But we were just so excited to have you come and share. You have a unique story. You created a wonderful invention called Unicorn Spit. Very yeah. interesting. People are going to be like, what the heck is that? <laughs> but it has to do with arts and crafts and uh, a wonderful tool so you can create. And I love to create. I do a lot of arts and crafts. I've created some furniture and I love to paint. Um, so you're going to share what even prompted you to create Unicorn Spit and then we'll go into what it is. Well, you know, what prompted me to create it was really just necessity. Um, I had worked at an adult daycare with the elderly and disabled for, oh gosh, on and off since I was about 15 years old. And um, when I when I got divorced, um, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm going back to my roots. I'm going to go work with the elderly and disabled because they made me feel good. I liked them anyway. And so, um, you know, we they were bored. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to do little kids crafts. And so one day I pulled in a piece of furniture I found on the side of the road. And it was like, everybody's eyes lit up. And they were like, even the guys with the Alzheimer's were like, oh, well, I know how to help you with that. It was amazing to see them go. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we got all of them going and we we're refinishing furniture and we sanded it all down and then they wanted color. But everything that I found um, that was a wood stain because they refused to paint wood um, was pretty toxic. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, no, like we can't have them using toxic things that have fumes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them didn't have like great ways to like keep themselves protected, even with gloves and such mm -hmm. from, you know, touching it. And so uh, I just started fooling around in my kitchen with different things like beet juices and and anything with color and stuff, food coloring, drinks, yeah, um, like powdered drinks, anything that had color to try to figure it out. And it took me a couple of weeks, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And I came up with this really strong stuff that was really colorful. And I brought it in and everybody was able to do it. Oh, wow. No, no bad smells, nothing mm -hmm. toxic that'll hurt them. Nothing that would make their skin irritated. And we did that for a long time. And that's how I invented it. We did that for about four or five years at the daycare roof, uh -huh. refinished furniture with these crazy <laughs> colors and stain. And then we would sell those pieces of furniture and I'd load them up on our activities van and I'd take them to the casino. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, that's so funny. funny. Now we're yeah. going to go get some prize winnings. No, I love your story of working with these older um, people and finding a way for them to create artwork that was not so toxic. Now you finally made it into a product that could go on the market. Yes. How did that all work out? You know, from Gosh, design you know, to mm -hmm. go ahead from design to, to Ooh. where we are now. I mean, it's just, yeah. it, it was just a whirlwind. Um, you know, uh, we had a lot of budget cuts in the state of Kansas for our health care. And um, unfortunately, one of the things that they no longer were supporting were um, social services um, for the elderly and disabled. Um, you had to be 70 years plus in order to qualify for certain waivers that our business, uh, my brother's business survived on. And uh, unfortunately, we had to let go of our daycare after being in bit, working for it for going on 20 years. So it was closed. And, you know, but it, I keep in contact with all my oldies that are still around today. And um, it was such a miracle. It really was. They instilled me in, with things that, you know, my, I saw my parents do, but they refreshed me. And, and they taught me some really interesting things that even my parents didn't teach me or didn't know. And, you know, I took that information that I learned from them and was like, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm going to refinish furniture full time because I didn't, I don't have a, I never went to college. I never learned anything extravagant. I got my CNA license mm -hmm. so that I could work at the daycare and be a backup for that. And you know what? I, I couldn't make enough money to make money after paying childcare if I took a regular job. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to follow the trash routes and I'm going to pick up everything I possibly can for free on the side of the road. And I'm going to fix it up and I'm going to sell it because I'm already going to be saving a lot of money by not having to put my kids through daycare at the, at the, at the adult daycare that I worked mm-hmm. and the kids weren't in school. Mm-hmm. They could come to work with me. They had 50 grandma and grandpas to play checkers with in the such, you know, but now yeah. I couldn't do that if I went to work for like a bank or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did it. And people were like, wow, this is incredible. How are you doing this? I've never seen these colors before. This is crazy. And, you know, it's like my kids were going right along with me and, and helping me refinish. And on the weekends, we'd be like, hey, let's go to the craft, to the um, shops or the roads and help me load up these pieces of furniture I'm finding. It was like a giant treasure hunt for me and my children. We loved it. Yeah. And uh, one day somebody was like, huh? I, I, I just love that happening because it looked like a misfortune, but you said, okay, if I go to work, I'm going to lose time with my kids and it's actually not going to be cost beneficial. Why None. don't we just find stuff on the side of the road? Cause you know, Americans throw out things like this, even a lot of the times they're in awesome condition and right. you fix it up, resell it. Bam. It's awesome. It's a great focus for like sustainability. You know, right now we also can't get a lot of things in because of logistics problems that are going on. So, you know, reduce, reuse and recycle can go way beyond a plastic bottle. Uh It can go into anything. And so that's kind of like how all this started for me, because it was a means necessity for me to survive with my children. And um, I just worked it, worked it, worked it. And people were taking pictures of my stuff and putting it online. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to put a couple pictures of my stuff and putting it online. And then it was like, people were like, do you really make this stuff? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, can I get some? So I started putting it in little glass mason jars and sending them out to people. And then Uh I moved up from um, mason jars to plastic bottles. And then I got went from my spaghetti pot to turkey fryers. And then I outgrew my turkey fryers and I ended up hiring four employees. And it, luckily I started my business in the summer. So my little boys were putting the lids on all the jars and putting stickers on all the jars and helping me stack them. And, um, and then I outgrew my 55 gallon drums that I was making it in and a company called Eclectic Products that I had got a hold of and told them, oh my God, I love your epoxy. It makes everything look so cool. They're like, we'd like to talk to you. They came out and they were like, we've got a licensing agreement for you. And I was like, what is it? And it was like the answers to like anybody's wildest dreams and prayers because Uh unicorn spit is everywhere. And I don't have to concentrate anymore on mixing and making and bottling and all the really hard stuff. Mm -hmm. And now I just get to focus on celebrating all its magic and, you know, getting others excited about the endless possibilities of it. So it was like a whirlwind in in 2013, it was spaghetti pot, 2014, it was turkey fryers, 2015, it was 55 gallon drums. And by 2016, Eclectic has it being sent out to the whole wide world. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. Michelle, I love your story because it is the essence of what makes America and why people want to come to the United States and start a better life. It's because it is here that that can happen. It you can is. take it is you can take this idea and you can grow it and and you know, just grow it bit by bit like a flower that you water bit by bit and it can explode and bring magic to the world and you're bringing value and people can take that and make their own value, but that is just the American dream. It's just awesome. It's a hundred percent the American dream. It really is. And, you know, there's so many, you know, there's so many grants and different things out there that you can apply for. Um, I never applied for any of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure that if I had, I probably wouldn't have had to work so hard, but (laughs) just shows that with a lot of hard work Mm -hmm. and just um, maybe enjoying you know, finally making the investment into yourself and doing something that's considered work that you enjoy, you Mm -hmm. can really flourish with whenever you're like, you know, I work what, like 18 hours a day, Mm -hmm. but it's not really work to me. It's like, 
you know, I get to chit chat with people and give them instructions and have them, you know, feel inspired or listen to their stories about how they feel like, you know, I did some type of difference in their life that made them feel better because I introduced them to a new arting style. And, you know, that's not work. No, that's just not work. That is really just living embodiment of everything that will bring positivity to you, including enough jingle to keep your lights on, you know, so it's good. Yeah. And and you allow people, even if they don't take um, unicorn spit and decide to do something that will make them money, like we were talking about just before the interview together, I find just making arts and crafts or doing creative work just is like, it's stress relieving and, and it's like refreshing to the soul. So it, it's just a great way for people to unwind, to create, to express themselves. And, and your unicorn spit allows them to do that. And, uh, and then your story here allows people to say, okay, what is my gift? What, what do I just jazz and do without thinking about it? And I think that's what people take for granted. You love doing this with the old people you worked with in the, in the home, but then you decide, okay, what can I, how can I use this? And then you took your kids on the road and you picked up stuff and you just started building it and reselling it and revamping it and people everyone has their gifts that they probably don't even pay attention to that they use every single day that it's just they just take for granted they do you know i i'm a firm believer that every single one of us has this little thing this little thing that's maybe here and and we suppress it a lot like Mm -hmm. if you're in school as a child The first thing that we start to do is color crayons. That's the very first thing. And we're like, man, I'm getting good with this. We move up to, you know, colored pencils. And then we move up to, you know, watercolors. And then, you know, and we could, we could keep growing and growing and growing these very nurturing self-centered things. We need to have something that's self-centered and art Mm -hmm. is that. Yeah. And as we get older, it's taken from us and suppressed. And the second somebody tells you, you know what, that didn't turn out so good, or you didn't win even any place in the art fair or something. Mm -hmm. Some people will take that little drum that was, that was here that started marching its way up to their heart and go, okay, never mind, It's useless. But Mm -hmm. that little piece is never going to go away. It's a little Mm -hmm. seed that I think that, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer. I love God. I love Jesus and all that stuff But I think, and it's, it's scientifically proven that humans are the only creature living creature known in existence that creates art, not out of sustainability, but out of desire for comfort, for pleasure. And that little gift is in every single one of us. And if you just Give yourself that selfish moment to push away all the bad and just go, this is my color. This Mm -hmm. is my canvas Mm. right here. I can make the most beautiful world I want or the craziest world I want or just whatever world might pour out of me. And, Mm -hmm. and it just meditates and brings it right out. And the more you do that, your little meditation bubble, your little self-love bubble, Uh kind of just grows and grows and grows until one day that little seed that was down here not only comes up, but it embodies you. And it's something that you can take with you, not only when you're sitting down at the kitchen table or in your Mm -hmm. studio or wherever you are doing your little scribble on a napkin or whatever Mm -hmm. chance you get to do it. You can take that feeling that once it comes encompasses you Mm -hmm. anywhere you go in life and it'll change the way you treat people, Mm -hmm. um, that aura that it brings that willingness to accept Mm -hmm. and look at the prettier things in life or, or the silver linings to clouds will also give you a better reaction from other people and how they speak to you. So it just, it's a growing thing Uh, of positivity that I I think we can utilize forever. We just need to touch it once in a while until it's it all explodes. over. You know what it is, I, I uh, Michelle, I think that that creative nature, it, it's what we're built in the image of God. And that's just, we're built to create and whatever we God put it. in our heart, like maybe uh, for you, it's creating a business, maybe for another person, it's creating colors, you know, for every single person it's different. My one friend, all she can talk about is 
health and fitness. I mean, she just loves it. <laughs> but I think often you'll find what your seed that you're talking about is, is the thing that you can't stop talking about or going back to or always focusing on because it's in your heart. It was placed there by God, the creator, as your gifts and talent to express and to give into the world. And when you mentioned that, that, you know, when you explode and you let that be expressed, it's like a ripple in the pond. The others start to feel that and then they want to go in and express their gifts and talents in the world. And then it's just a glorious, as you said, bringing positivity as we all ripple in the pond outward, our, our gifts and talents and love. Could yeah. you imagine if if more people mm. did it? If more people could just you know take that concept and and just try? Yeah, you know. I mean, I think that the world. I, my phone keeps drooping. No worries. <laughs> Next thing I need to work on is inventing a good phone stand. <laughs> Don't worry. But, I know you could do it too. It would be colorful and gorgeous. Could. But. but it, it, it's and you know, for people not to poo poo also whatever their gifts and talents is because I think like you were mentioning if I had to put my kids in a day car daycare, I will lose more money than just staying home with them and doing my own thing or figuring out what my own thing is. Yeah, I think a lot of times we decide oh. no worries. I think a lot of times it's a good phone stand. <laughs> <laughs> Going to hold in my dang hand. There yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of times though we 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 um, are told by society that the things we love and cherish and excite us are not important. Like if it's fitness or if it's coloring or if it's creating things, oh, well, that's not important. You know, go get a job at a desk. And, you know, a lot of times that, that pulls us away from where we're truly supposed to be. So, yeah, your story today, I think it really totally illustrates for everyone out there. Go out and find out what your your gift is and freely explore it or begin to, you know, let it go into the world see where it takes you you know don't say it's not valid or you know it doesn't make me money don't worry about the money part just go and do it express it exactly you know if you need to grow yourself and you need you know you can apply for for like you know college loans and different things like that mm -hmm. but you know the, the, there's a lot of different things out there especially for for um parents Mm -hmm. for parents out there where they've got different programs like that to help you just get a little extra jingle <laughs> on a card if you need to make some money for the month or, yeah. or buy groceries for the month you know mm -hmm. there are all types of ways out there besides going out and getting in debt with student loans and different things like that mm -hmm. where you can just discover yourself invest in yourself mm -hmm. use sustainability as your um as your resources, mm. go out there and find things that are for free, yeah. reformulate them, reinvent the wheel, turn it into something somebody likes. Yeah. And, you know, you can do this. There's so many ways to do it. And then, you know, it could be digital art. It doesn't necessarily have to be with my magical little creation that somehow I was blessed with, but you know, there's so many different yeah. ways that you can do it. You know, yeah. balloon art, even think of all the people who are now doing birthday parties who do these mm. beautiful balloon arches and different things like that. It's all about just connecting into that and yeah. giving yourself a try. And if you are just say, you're, you know, if you have a customer service job, a lot of people find customer service um, their happiest thing because they're making people happy. They're yeah. coming to them in time and need. It's an art to sing to somebody and help them correct their problems. Mm -hmm. But in the day, whenever you're ready to go home and you need to relax and unwind, invest in yourself, invest in yourself, cook a beautiful meal, mm -hmm. make a cake that has pretty fancy little lacing on it, even if it's only for yourself or sit down at a table and just take all the colors and just swirl them around and make something beautiful out of just maybe you've got a, a coffee stain on your favorite white shirt and you're really mm. upset about that. Well, you know what? Go get that white shirt that's got the coffee stain in it that you put in the dryer before you noticed it. And let's let's drizzle a little color on it and turn it into a piece of art. And you can be like, yeah, I fixed that mistake because now it's even more pretty than it was. <laughs> now it rocks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Totally. Oh, and you know, so much. you know what's funny, girl, um, Michelle, you know, my hair is funky pink now. This all started because I was doing my normal brown hair many years ago. And I went to a Caribbean island for two months to learn and study Spanish. And I was so much in the sun because I was out in Puerto Rican sun a lot that my hair went from like a light brown to blonde. 
like a like a mixture of all these blondes and reds and auburn and it looks so funky and awesome everyone was like oh my god your hair looks awesome you you got a really cool treatment it wasn't a cool treatment it was called the sun but that was what got me started on you know trying funky stuff on my hair is because i went in the sun without realizing it it did these funky colors in my hair and hence um, from that you know i started doing my hair all crazy all these years but it was started with hanging in the sun doing that job so <laughs> you know it, it happens yeah you know it re you reinvented your your whole look just by you know absorbing the environment and the nature around you and it gave you a little happy little accident because look at it now it looks like you even put pink in there <laughs> yeah yeah i did i did I well that it's so awesome. It's been great. I really hope um, your story has inspired others to look within and, and find those gifts and talents, pull them out, explore them and explode them into the world. But where do people get your unicorn spit, find out more about you? And you have a book out. Share that with the audience. Okay. Well, yes, I wrote a book. I'm so excited about it. Little dingbat Michelle wrote a oh. book. <laughs> Isn't that the funniest thing ever? And so, um, I'm real excited. It's right here. I just got my author copies yesterday. So it's over 52 projects. I sat and I had a couple of my, um, my girlfriends that I've met through the art world also do a couple of projects in here as well, hmm. but it's 52 projects of how to take ordinary items or plain boring items or things that you found on the side of the road and turn them into awesome pieces of art. And it's all done with the one product. So watercolor, um, wood staining, refinishing furniture, mm -hmm. doing faux stained glass, like you see behind me and that peacock, mm, that's awesome. um, so many different things that you use this one medium on and it replaces like hundreds of different art mediums out there because you just mix it with a few clear catalysts. You have every color in the world. And so it, yeah. I got the book and I'm super excited. So it's, um, a hundred and 57 pages or 257 pages, 52 projects, I mm. might be 54. And it's amazing. Um, you can get the book right now at rockynook.com, who is my publisher. And then mm -hmm. you can also find it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, it's right now the number one trending arts and crafts book on Amazon. And it's only in the pre-order. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and then, you, of course, you can find it at my online store, which is Michelle Nichols with the S at the end dot com. Um, there you can find not only the book, but you can find Unicorn Spit and also my concept colors. And so concept colors are really exciting. I didn't just stop with Unicorn Spit. Um, I wanted more colors. So like right now I'm getting ready to release a whole metallic line Ooh. and you can find those there to try out on, and, and it's pre, what do you call it? Prototype trialing that we're wow. doing. Um, but if you wanted to check out the brand itself, it's a uh, unicornspit.com. Mm -hmm. My manufacturer is Eclectic Products Inc. Mm -hmm. out in um, Oregon. And they um, handle all my wholesale for me and different things like that. So it's nice not to have my fingers in that. And I can just concentrate on making art, writing Yay. books, and uh, inventing new color concepts. So that is so cool. Uh, colors make things so happy. Now, I'm curious. The In the name Unicorn Spit, the I in spit is lowercase. I'm, I'm curious. Why is that? I noticed that in your... In your, in your well, it wasn't... It wasn't originally, um, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, how can I represent the little guy, the little me? Aww. I'm not anybody special. There's mm -hmm. so many people out there that are, you know, these big mass production things where people get like the beautiful embroidered shirt, yeah. Walmart, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's so many things out there that are just mass produced. Mm -hmm. So how can I make something that lets people know that this is for them? This is their way to stand out in a sea full of capital letters, big companies, mm. it's this little I, just you, me, myself, and I. And so huh. it represents all the moms, dads, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, okay. grandparents that are making something unique. Because mm -hmm. every single time you make something with unicorn spit, it's going to be unique. Nothing turns out the same every single time you do it. And 
it's a great way for us to always identify as, you know, mm-hmm. me, myself, and I, we made yeah. this one. And, you know, it stands out mm-hmm. in a field of professional replications. Yes. It does stand out a lot. <laughs> I, I love that, Michelle, because, you know, one gal had said to me um, many years ago, oh, you have to be an artist to make art stuff and whatever. And we had had a Christmas party and someone made some homemade painted art stuff and everyone was like oh my gosh i didn't know you were an artist but that because people think artist has to be a certain thing oh you do paintings all day long and you sell them for a thousand dollars or something like that and you have art exhibitions art is your expression on paper and or any medium you expressing and creating so you don't need to be an artiste to do this no No. never you you already are an artist Mm -hmm every single one of us and just to be an artist can be you know decorating is an art I mean everybody is an artist you know you make your bed and you put your pillows just so so and make sure that your Mm -hmm. bedspread's laid out nice and slick that's an art so you know anybody can be an artist whether it's their full-time job or their hobby or just something that they always tend to do out of habit. Mm-hmm. Everyone's an artist. And uh, if, if you're wanting to try all types of other type of arts mm-hmm. and you don't want to have to invest in hundreds of different types of art mediums because you just are so excited and want to dabble with all of them, that's where Unicorn Spit comes in. So it'll allow you to find maybe one that seems to really make you radiate and shine yeah. before you... Yeah. Well, everyone. Uh, yeah. So everyone go out there and get your very own copy of Unicorn Spit today. You can go to unicornspit.com or Michelle Nichol- Nichols, Michelle Nichols.com and get your wonderful book today. So you can try all these wonderful mediums and artwork and see which one just, you know, jazzes you right up and gets you excited and gets you expressing today. Thank you so much, Michelle, for coming to share on Thank Saturday Broadcasting. It's been a blast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. I appreciate you having me on. Hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy being in our beautiful country of the USA. You betcha, girl. <laughs> like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.